Hello everybody, it's me Nate, aka Devil Dog, and I'm back with another game review. This time I'm reviewing Remnant from the Ashes. It was developed by Gunfire Games and published by Perfect World, costs $39.99, and was originally released on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows on August 20th of 2019. And they're probably thinking, hey Nate, why are you doing a review on this now? Well, since this is one of the free games of the PlayStation plus lineup of March 2021 and I never did a review on it I figured why not that way people who have PlayStation Plus and are on the fence with this title I can let you know what it is now what exactly is Remnant from the Ashes well it is a third-person survival action shooter with RPG elements and a Dark Souls style mechanic Remnant from the Ashes stands out with some interesting variants from these different titles now the plot centers on you a remnant of of humanity who can set out on your adventure with up to two other players as you travel and do missions and objectives in a post-apocalyptic world that has been thrown into chaos by an ancient evil from another dimension. Now, as you either solo the game or play with up to two other players, you'll travel from other different areas of alternate realities and different dimensions, fighting monsters, tackling epic bosses, all while trying to uncover the mystery of why and where this evil came from and hopefully save and rebuild mankind. Now, as you start the game, you get to pick from one of three different classes. Uh, you have the Scrapper, who is basically a close-range uh, combat class. Um, you know, really, that's really about it. Then you have the Ex-Cultist, which is a little bit more balanced, seems to be balanced between close and far-range combat, and is kind of considered the support class to help you and your other members of the team. And last, but definitely not least, is the Hunter, a long-range attacker uh, that is known for doing critical damage. It's basically your long range DPS class in the game. And those are your three classes that you have. Now, all these characters start off with the same stats, but the only real difference is they have different starting gear. But now, as you go through these different levels, gaining experience and gathering items, you can custom build your character by purchasing and upgrading your gear, weapons, along with activating traits. Now, what are traits? Well, every time you gain about 1,500 experience points, I give or take, you'll receive a trait point uh, that you can then use to invest in, in one of 50 different traits. Now, some are your basic traits, but some can only be unlocked by certain bosses and events in the game. Now, each trait can then also be leveled up to a max level of 20, and naturally, each trait has a very unique effect and is always active. You can go and reset set your traits, uh, your, your points and everything, by using something known as a Orb of Undoing by beating a character called the Dreamer, or if you head back to your local uh, you know, home base and talk to Reggie at your home base, you can reset them there. Oh, I almost forgot to point out, um, as you're exploring these game worlds, um, if you find something known as a Tome of Knowledge, that pretty much automatically gives you an additional tra uh, trait point that you can use to tweak your character. Now, along with the traits, you also have weapon mods, and they provide offensive and defensive effects in battle, but they must be charged to use. It normally consists of killing more enemies to get the meter charged so you can use it. That's their version of a cooldown mode for it, so you can't keep spamming uh, your uh, weapon mods. And you know, they'll do different things like uh, allow you to heal your team, be able to see enemies from afar, increase your damage output, you know, stuff like that and you can change out your mods in your weapons and most of them are dropped from either defeating bosses purchasing them from vendors uh, in the game world or back at your save point um, and you can craft them as well uh, certain ones now the other thing I kind of noticed which uh, kind of makes sense but is annoying there are some really unique mods and stuff that you can only get with the DLCs in this game uh, the game you're receiving for your PlayStation Plus of March is just the basic base game. I don't believe it comes with the DLC. I will have to check and if I'm wrong I will update this video at a later point. Now 
As for the crafting in the game, it's rather bare bones and simplistic. You'll basically, as you're exploring these game worlds and fighting enemies, you'll find recipes in the game, uh, and then naturally combining these with different crafting uh, materials that you find by either gathering or killing enemies or bosses, you can then go back and craft mods, new weapons, and even armor for your characters. And the way to do it is you just go to like an NPC in your Ward 13 main base, one's located right next to the crystal, and you talk to them and one of the options is the crafting menu. It's very simplistic as long as you have the right materials and you actually have the quote recipe, it will allow you to actually craft um, you know different uh, you know um, items for your character. Uh, you know, I have noticed though there are certain crafting items and certain weapons that you can only get from um, high-end bosses and also in the DLCs. Um, you still don't have any weakling crap. I mean most of the abilities and stuff you have in this game are pretty easy to use and uh, hands down my personal favorite character to play as is the hunter because I love being able to shoot enemies from a huge distance away and every single character will still also have a uh, ranged weapon and also a close up weapon so don't worry if you're a ranged guy and they get too close you still can pull out your trusty rusty sword and as you progress through the game uh, you can get through it roughly the main story uh, arc in about 20 hours or so but if you're a complete and you really want to do and see everything, there's well over 100 hours of gameplay in this title. It, it is a rather large game, and I did find a lot of the levels you go through, um, the load times are kind of sucky, but nothing really earth-shatteringly bad to sit through, maybe like a minute or so while you're loading a level. But once you get in the levels, I've noticed the levels are very big. You have everything from outdoor areas and dis decrepit cities, um, you know, weird like uh, demon worlds, uh, uh, sewers, you know, basically a nice variety in terms of the uh, the graphics. Though the graphics may not be the best on the market, you know, um, it, it's an older game and it does serve its purpose rather well. Now, as for your control in the game, the trigger buttons are what you aim and shoot with. Uh, naturally, you have your roll mechanic that is tied into your stamina be, uh, meter, which will recharge. So if you want to sprint, you can hold down your analog stick to sprint. If you want to roll and dodge the enemy attacks, uh, basically you hit your roll button. Um, and other than that, that's really about it. You're just running and gunning, rolling, shooting these spawning demon enemies uh, that has a nice different amount of variety in terms of the level designs and the, the enemy designs. They're really neat looking. And uh, I have found that it can be kind of cheap, especially if you're in a certain area that is like a corridor or something. You can have enemies spawn from both sides of you and kill you pretty quick. Now, if you're playing the game solo, once you die, that's it. It will pretty much take you back to your last, quote, bonfire, your save point. Uh, that's uh, the uh, reference I'm going to say with Demon Souls that it has. And it's once you go to a bonfire to save, it will give you your life back, give you all your ammo back, but it will respawn all enemies that you have defeated in the game world. Uh, but you'll go and you'll do these missions, and if you have people playing with you, they can revive you if you get knocked down and killed. Uh, uh, all they have to do is stand over you and hit their button and they can revive you. And uh, that's what makes it a little bit better to play with a group. It does seem to have voice chat and it's really kind of unique. It's based on how close you are to the other character. So if your other character in your group is far away, you can't really hear them, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. And if you're close, you can talk to people with your voice chat. You know, say, hey, cover me. It does actually come with different emotes that you can activate as well. So if you don't have a microphone or don't want to talk to anybody, you can still go ahead and, you know, like, hey, high five, good for you, and all that sort of stuff. Um, the voice acting is fairly decent in it, and it, it is a rather fun, challenging game, though I do think some of the spawns that they have of the enemies are kind of cheap. Like I said, they will spawn like right around behind you and stuff and kind of cheap shot you. Uh, but other than that, most of the game levels are designed in a way to where they're so big with different areas, other than like this, the underground sewer areas. Uh, you have enough room where you can run and gun and heal yourself and be strategic 
strategic with these enemies in order to defeat them. I mean, a pretty good amount of variation in the enemies. The bosses are really challenging yet fun. And while it does kind of have a um, you know Dark Souls mechanic, if you die, uh, you you don't really seem to lose anything. You know, you you still seem to have all the stuff that you've gathered. The only thing is, is it starts you back at the last uh, bonfire save point, and uh, the enemies respawn. I haven't really noticed it to really be too, um, you know, bad in terms of its brutal difficulty. Though naturally, if you play with more than one person, it does have more enemies spawn, which naturally it would do that to make the difficulty more intense. But in the end, if you have a PlayStation Plus membership and you haven't played Remnant from the Ashes yet, I can actually highly recommend downloading and playing the game today. While, like I said, some of the graphics are kind of drab, they're not really that bright and vibrant except for certain worlds that you go to in the end it is a fa fast fun frantic uh, playing game that seems to run pretty good I haven't had any real major crashes while playing online with people the net code seems to be fairly decent it runs at a good rate I I've had a couple instances of like uh, the graphical fidelity of the textures not loading in immediately uh, but that harkens back to the game engine that they used on this uh, but in the end I can highly recommend that you pick up and play Remnant from the Ashes today it's actually a pretty decent game. I don't know why they only have three people. I was wondering why it wasn't a four player, but in the end it doesn't really matter because it's still a pretty decent game and I like the ability to mix and match and tweak your character to make them your own character and hands down like I said Hunter is my favorite favorite character to play as. This was Nate aka Devil Dog and I'm I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Please leave in the comments below if you played Remnant from the Ashes or if you plan to. Which is your favorite character? Make sure to hit the bell icon to stay updated whenever I release any new videos on my channel. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. And remember, I always end my videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out until next time.